Okay, uh, welcome to my laboratory. This is um, a solenoidally wound drive coil. I've made two of these and I've put them in position where the toroidally wound coils were uh, for uh, all of the previous demonstrations. This is one of the this is one of the toroidally wound long tall Texan drive coils. We had this one here and uh, Here's the other one. I have it wrapped in tape, but you can see that these are the toroids. Now these coils here are solenoidally wound. Let me see if I can get you a close-up of that. Uh, okay, so that's the same long tall Texan toroid core and the same amount of wire. I just wound it around the outside, uh, just like uh, just like a solenoid, okay, and it's stuffed onto the the toroid is just slid onto the same uh, popsicle stick mount that uh, I normally use, and this one over here on the other side is is just the same. It's just wrapped with tape, okay, solenoidally wound uh, coils, and uh, I apologize for having the current and voltage upside down, but that's the only way I could get everything in the picture. We're going to be running off of the C cell here. The 9 volt battery under there will be powering the switch circuit and that's what's happening now. I have the coil power disconnected and uh, let's see, make sure the, the ground is hooked up right. So I have the coil power disconnected uh, but the switch power is on, so you can see the red light. And what I'm going to do is show you how it's timed. Hall sensor right here. Okay, so first, let me go ahead and put this back into position. Okay, now the reason that I'm using the exact same toroids and everything should be, or the same forms should be pretty obvious, same amount of wire and all that, so that we have, uh, we have the same quivering effect obviously because the magnets are attracted to the cores. <laughs> now I'm going to turn the rotor and I'd like you to watch the, the light and compare that to where the uh, magnet positions are. Maybe it would be good if I marked the magnet positions a little bit more clearly. Yeah, that shows up good. Okay, so if I go clockwise, you can see from that where the timing would be. So the closest approach of the rotors uh, is going to be about there. So if I See there? So it's going, it's turning on just a little bit before top dead center and going this way, same thing. It turns on just a little before top dead center. So this is symmetrical timing with respect to top dead center. <coughs> now I have the coil polarity uh, configured right now as uh, repulsive. Okay, so when I give it the power and spin it goes and you notice that it wants to go in one direction right it won't go this way in fact if I give it a spin this way it will oftentimes actually reverse direction and start going clockwise right so I'm sorry you can't see the counter but we're accelerating through 8 Hertz right now and uh, I've got a really weak battery and perhaps the timing is not set optimally but I want to leave it right where it is because I want to show you that when I reverse the polarity remember I, I have the secret double pole double throw technology here so when I switch this switch it will reverse the polarity that the coil is seeing okay ready all right let's do it again the other way now my timing is not perfectly symmetrical, which is why it runs better going the opposite direction with opposite coil polarity. And this actually turns the motor into uh, a, a, an attractive pulse motor when I reverse the polarity to the coils. 
So there's an effect there, a very clear effect, if you have a, a, an attractive pulse motor, or rather a, a pulse motor, if you switch from attraction to repulsion by swapping the polarity of the coils, the motor has a very different behavior. And it depends on how, uh, on how it's timed, actually. Okay? Now, if I swivel the coils to the exact perpendicular position like this, make sure that I'm not interfering with anything. Okay, now in this position, you can very clearly see the hole in the donut. Let me see if I can find it exactly. Okay, you see how there's two quiver positions there? If I, what I'm doing is I'm rotating this coil just a little bit this way. Boom, boom, okay. So, there's a quiver position. And there is a quiver position. So what's happening is there's a little potential hill that the magnets see right in the hole of the donut. And if you're not exactly right on the line, the thing will prefer to be on one side or the other of that slight potential hill. And if you get it just right, you can kind of make a, a null spot in there where there's really a wide potential well and then these two steep hills on either side of it okay but if you're a little bit off from that like if you only have one one rotor say right there's a, a hill and then there's there's a little well right in the middle and then there's another hill and you can see how the that makes the the quiver much broader you see how see how and and then there's there's almost two locations where it would prefer to be there and there. See that? There and there. There. Just a little bit there. See, I went too far. There. There. There and there. See there? So there's a little potential hill right in between these two potential valleys, and that's the hole in the donut right there. Okay? That's the hole in the donut. So if I set my other magnet right there too, or my other coil right there too, I can effectively almost cancel out or make broader that potential well right in the middle of those two little potential hills in the center of the donut. And when I do that, the rotor almost floats in that little zone. All right? You see that? And then. When I give it the power or give it a little starting spin. This is attractive. And you can see how the, the thing really wants to lock in that position. This is repulsive and there's less of a less of a lock. Right? And then if I really tweak the timing to one side or another. Let me disconnect the uh, coil power here for a second so I can see where the timing is. Sorry. Okay. Now, if I have it timed way out in some weird position like that, now it's starting to work as a repul or, a, or an attractive pulse motor. And if I switch the polarity, it goes the other way. And if I have it timed just right, it'll really go fast with those coils set just exactly in the center like that. 
Now we're still on, on, on uh, 1.23 volts and 230 milliamps input and uh, the counter says we're passing through 69 hertz right now times 15 is the RPM. Thanks a lot.